Adam, first look at Ryan Merrick today on the training track. How do you, how do you go? <laughs> He's in the mix. Um, <laughs> he, um, yeah, look, obviously... Um, uh, he's young, he's 18, so he, uh, he missed the draft last year. He's done a lot of work um, at Gippsland as a top age player. And he's played the last two or three games at Box Hill and um, he's a tall mid-range forward. Um, got good hands and he's a, he's a good kick, so I only seen him for 10 minutes though. So um, he's already connected with the young guys. You know, list is getting pretty young pretty quick, so I think I met him at the airport yesterday and um, yeah, he'll play. He'll play Waffle this week, so um, we'll go from there. What's it like bringing someone so young? And does it bring a sense of excitement to the club having so young kid coming? Well, I've been doing it a little bit lately, haven't we? So um, yeah, we. I mean, obviously, Jai last year as well. He was he was a bit. I think he might have been 18 or 19 um, himself. So yeah, it's the mid-season draft. It's a different uh, different look that you have um, with who's available and and the rules are a bit different, but. Yeah, another opportunity to bring some youth into the side and into the club. So, yeah, look forward to it. You said he's playing Waffle this weekend. What do you guys sort of just expect for him just to go out there and have a crack and have, go fun? And have a kick? Yeah. Um, I don't know how much the ball's going to come down to the front up the fourth at the moment with our, our availability at Waffle Eagles. Is it, um, he'll add to, to the depth of the, of the side. And as we get players back, I think we'll see a more opportunity with our forwards. And yeah, he might get some senior exposure. And, this this season, you, you never know. So it happened with Jai. So no reason why I can't. Is that kind of the path that you follow? Like Jai had a couple of games in last year, had a big off season, came back looking really fit. Yeah. And bigger. Is that the same? For the They're all different. Yeah. It. Um, I mean, we we use the draft as p for the future. You know, so we can try and scramble and get some players to top up and, and help us out now. Um, but I think where we're at, we're, we're looking more longer term. So you know, um, yeah, that's that's what we did with Jai, and that's what we did with Ryan. He was the clear favourite amongst all the clubs, Ryan, as the number one pick. So what do you see as his sort of upside? How big is his skill? Well, he's, he's just done a lot of work to personally to get himself in a position to, you know, when you don't get drafted, it's a, it's a fair kick. Um, so to go back, um, train hard, uh, get the best out of yourself when a lot of your friends have been picked up or drafted and you know, going through it for many, many years. If you don't get drafted, some people just pack it in, you know, and they move on with the rest of their life. So to fight through it and become available and, and get drafted, um, not, not second chance, but to, to really work on your own and get it right, that's that's part of the, you know, the appeal of getting these kids. Had a tough task this weekend taking on Collingwood. How have you guys sort of prepared for this one? Yeah, well, I mean, we're... Obviously, it's been a challenge um, throughout the year, and this this is probably the biggest one. So um, we we know where we're at, and they know where they're at. So it's it's going to be a, a pretty big challenge for us. But um, we we saw some good signs last week at stages. Um, whilst we haven't got any more senior players back, we get a chance to expose younger players again to quality side and what we can learn off them. And we also you know think there's some areas there we can challenge Collingwood as well. So we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, the guys are looking forward to it. As a coach, when you're looking at this sort of a challenge, how much do you have to weigh up keeping that game plan that you're trying to implement of you know run and carry as well as try to, I suppose, moderate the scoreboard and not yeah. get blown away? Yeah, that, in, in particular, I think a few weeks ago, um, yeah, we found it really difficult with, I think, Carlton game, um, even Gold Coast and, and Hawthorne. With the availability, it was a real challenge to be competitive. Um, I thought last week we did that better, and you saw a little bit more of our what we're chasing, and and that's what we'll try and do again this week. You know, with um, a couple of senior players who've come back, it can help that. But um, yeah, it's going to be there's going to be some ups and downs this week, but that's that's okay. It's all part of it. How important is it to build on the performance against the Bombers? So you came off a loss, big loss to Hawthorne, improved, won a couple of key statistics against the Bombers. Yeah. You have to sort of solidify that against Collingwood. Is there a risk oh. that if that gets if you get blown away, that, that works undone? Yeah, I, I'm not really worried about the result. Um, we just want to play a competitive brand. Um, you know, effort is a non-negotiable, as we've been saying, and uh, be as competitive as we can. And you never know. That's probably where we start with, and um, what will be will be. Every coach that comes up to his colleague, we probably gets asked this: Do you look to tag Nick Dacos? Yeah, there's a few there. Um, that will look doing it, but um, we might not as well. <laughs> I'm sure they've gone through every scenario already. He's a young player, but he seems to to handle things pretty well, and he's got fair support with his teammates. So it's not all about that, though. Their, their system and, and they're quite well connected across the across the ground. They all know their roles. 
and they're, they're pretty flexible. So the reason why it's a challenge is he can he can play on ball, wing, half forward. So to do that, you got to disrupt a fair bit of what you're trying to do, and that does mean you win anyway. So that's what teams weigh up, and that's why it's not happening every week. You brought Callum back this week, add a bit of height to the side as well, help out the ruck on the shooting is. Were you happy with his response to the waffle? Yeah, he, he needed to play better um, after the Hawthorne game, and he went back and played well. So um, that's part of these these kids coming through. They're not going to be as consistent as we'd like, but the way he responded, um, yeah, it was good. We we're pleased with it. So he needs to bring that this week and help out Bailey to a certain degree and and play forward a little bit as well. You spoke about it a bit last week, but how important is it to keep those like Chesser and Hewitt players in the waffle together for? consecutive weeks if you can with availability? Yeah, the, the balance, if we need to play them, we will. Um, I, I suppose it's just the balance of expectation for them personally, from, from our fans and, and supporters and, and from us as a club. So making sure we, we've got that in the right space and then, you know, whether they play seniors or reserves, it, um, it shouldn't really matter. It's, it's probably in... 40 games time, uh, what, have we, what have we got with uh, Ruben and Chester and Hewitt and these guys and Hoff, Bazo? that's part of the journey. As much as we're in a rush, you can't just rush games into these guys. So um, yeah, they probably played a little bit earlier than we would have liked, but they would have loved it. And the experience of, of it all is, is something that they all dream of. Um, so that's, that's what we're working through. There's been a lot of talk about this will, if you guys lose tomorrow, it'll be the 10th straight loss the Eagles, the first time that's happened. Does that weigh on you at all? Not really. Uh, I, I don't like losing. It's not, it's not a great feeling. And to, to work through a loss every week and get them up and our leaders, we lean on them as much as we can. But that, that's, that's just what is what it is. So um, as much as I say I can't control it, of course we can. <laughs> we can control it by winning. But the circumstances of which we've been working under have been quite challenging. Um, and the history books won't care. It's, that's that's where we are on the ladder, and that's what's you know up for grabs for if we don't win this week. On the, on the flip side to that, do you feel like the lack of expectation and maybe the fact that there's no pressure might fill the fire? A there's bit? no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> there's never no pressure, um, which is why I love the job. So you know, um, I go into every game thinking, and I'm sure our players do. Um, we're a chance here, and we'll, we'll, that's the way I feel this week. Do you take anything out of? The win against Collingwood last year when you had... Yeah, we're going to do exactly that and um, <laughs> follow that plan. Uh, we, we, it, was, uh, it was a good win last year. We haven't had too many in the last couple of years and that was that was one. I think JK might have been pretty accurate and Willie might have played well. Um, a lot of supply that we defended well. We had McGovern and Barras who held up the fort really well and we converted in the front half. So whilst we won that game, it wasn't a sustainable brand. I think it was like 60 inside 50s to 40 and we converted and they missed. So as much as we, we can say we reflect on that game, we're on a different pathway at the moment with what we're trying to do and we'll do our best to, to play our, our brand and see how we go. There's been a fair few uh, changes both here and at Collingwood since 2018. Do you feel like the rivalry is still there between the two teams going back to those? <laughs> yeah, there was some really good games there. Um, one, one in particular uh, a few years ago. So, yeah, but the, the final before that grand final, and I think it was a final after we got we got beaten by a point, I think, at home. So, yeah, the, I mean, there's always the long-term rivalry. You can go way back to... The, the 90s uh, with Collingwood as well so um, and there's going to be ups and downs for both clubs so yeah everyone looks forward to playing Collingwood and uh, Dom Sheed playing his 150th pretty fitting uh, for this occasion how, how have you seen yeah, I didn't think about that yeah it's good timing for, I mean he, we watched his little highlights video um, you know we have a little bit of a bond at my first year we, was the first draft pick um, so he's, he's been around 10 odd years and like me and like the club, he's had some ups and downs. Um, he was playing reserves football during 18 and then he's finished off the year pretty well. Um, so a lot of highlights were from one particular game, uh, but he's been great for, for the club. He's a, he's a leader, he's in our leadership group, um, play 150 games for us and you know he's, he's an eagle for life. You spoke about availability before. I heard you mention on radio last night that Todd Cole was tracking pretty well to maybe up and by, not long has yeah. it been? Well, this is the, the connection to the mid-season draft. I mean, you can only get extra selections if they're unavailable for the season, and none of our players are. So, yeah, the debate around the rules, we've just got to make sure we're, we're clear about the rules. They're confusing those rules because there's three different drafts, but um, yeah, this particular draft that, uh, that we went through, 
you, you, yeah, only unavailable for the season, you, you're not. So, Coley, Cripps, McGovern, uh, who else we have today? Darling. Um, uh, yeah, there's one more as well. They all train today, so it's just the first time I've seen them on the track. They actually got in the way of our captain's run, which is, I was actually okay with. So I think there was five guys there um, that all trained. With, so now it's a matter of getting the fitness piece together. And, and I, I would have thought after the bye, first few weeks, around 16, 17, 18, all those guys should be playing. Um, no, he was ill this week, I understand. Yeah. And that's why he's a bit of training. But also that Achilles might have had a bit of a setback or not. Recovering as well as you know. Yeah, I'm not sure. the setback piece. I haven't seen him for, for this week, but it's been slow going. We haven't got over the hurdle that you have to get over to get to the next phase. So um, I suppose you can call that a setback. It's just it's just not getting to the next level. So that's why we've been. It's hard to give you a timeline. So it's been six or seven weeks for a while now. Mm-hmm. So please don't overthink that. It's just we don't know until we get over this piece. Um, we can't move forward. So, and he was he was ill last week. So I haven't spoken to him. We'll we'll look see how he is um, early next week, and we'll try and give you a bit more guidance on what's happening with it. How's he going personally? Though? Oh, he must be tough. Yeah, it's it's been a tough six years really. And in, in that six years, he's won two best and fairest. So, um, yeah, when he's when he's available, um, he's still a very very good player. When he's fit and available, um, he's competition's best. So our goal is to try and get him back to that level. But at the moment, we just, the, we just can't get it right to the point where he can take the next step. Some of the um, some of the more experienced blokes uh, in the squad, they wouldn't be overawed playing a, a team on top of the ladder like Collingwood. But for some of the younger boys, if you've been trying to sort of <laughs> drill the message in during the week that you know you stick to your structures and so forth. Uh, not not really. No, that it's really hard to um, prep players to play in front of you know forty fifty thousand. It's and when you're eighteen. You think you're ready uh, and you think you can handle it, but then when you get out, then the game's so quick. Um, they're just got to learn by, by doing at the moment. So um, the leaders are important. That's why getting a few guys back last week with even Hearn and, and Yo and Barras coming back just help everyone. So we, we look forward to getting some of our senior players back, that's for sure. Finally, I suppose, as a coach, do you get to at all marvel at the fact that you might see Darcy Moore and Oscar Allen? Two of the best at the moment. Um, the mar- I don't marvel at it. Um, he can be managed if they want to manage him. Um, <laughs> they'll marvel at that. No, look, don't, every week you get to see that, you know. So yeah, I've been around a while and seen some really good matchups. And every player now has A graders throughout the the whole side, and um, both captains going against each other this week. Yeah, they'd be good. I think Luke said he's underrated, but you know, you look at the performance he's putting in, it is monumental considering his injury. And, Who's uh, that? Both Oscar. Oscar. And the fact you've only lost yeah, him. I think all of the guys have been exposed to the, the leadership piece um, have stepped up. You know, Liam Duggan, Tommy Barras, um, Oscar Allen. Well, we think Luke might be back next week. Luke Shue, that's another one. So he'll, he'll take it back on then. Um, but I'd love to give Dom a look at it as well down the track. So we'll see how we go. What, sorry, what does oh. what does giving those guys exposure to captaincy do for their long term development? Because you're only giving them a sort of two week cracks at being captain. What yeah. does it do for them? Well, it you can be a leader um, anywhere um, and be the two I see and be the guy that's the supportive um, type of leader. And then when it's time to step up and you expose yourself to more criticism, more pressure, um, and some people don't react well to that. So for these guys to do it and do it well straight away, um, yeah, that's the pleasing piece. So whenever the leadership structure settles in, in the next 12 months, I know that I've got three or four that, that can really step up when needed and you know, that can possibly lead the club.